Call this uh, meeting to order the Enfield Planning Zoning Commission at 7 o'clock on May 26th. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America, America. and the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The fire evacuation announcement. That, um, Exit doors are right behind you, please. If you need to need to evacuate, just go right behind you, or you can go out through this set of doors and then down the stairs and right out the uh, the back door there. In case of an emergency, please walk away from the building as far as possible. Thank you. Will the secretary please call the roll? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Louis Fiore. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. John Petronella is here. Uh, Francis Alimo. Here. Kiran Majbudar. Absent. Uh, Kenneth Holinsky. He's here remotely. Yeah. Remotely. Uh, Vinny Grillo. Here. Christian D'Antonio. Here. And Nicholas Lefakis is absent. Yeah. Looks like he's absent. Uh, seeing that, uh, with uh, full time member Karam Majadar absent tonight, it is um, Chris D'Antonio's month, so he will be sitting in as a regular member tonight for this meeting. And Vinny will be on call if, if needed for that. So, of course, Vinny, you know, you can participate in all the discussions, please. Having seen that, approval of the minutes of May 12th. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Higley, seconded by Commissioner Gray. Any discussion? Commissioner DeGray? Yeah, I do have a couple of comments, and I could just be me. On page two, under all business, second paragraph, we were talking about the um, pocket park, but on the second sentence it, I, the first and second sentence was a little confusing uh, where it say, um, says Mrs. Zapo, Zapo I can't say her name sorry Zapo Zapo, 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 Zapo thank you stated that 11 Thompson Court had been uh, I'm sorry wrong, wrong line all right stated that the soldier of Civil War statue sits in the middle of the redevelopment site of the Stan Lamagna Center, she stated that they would like to designate that area as a park. It kind of makes it sound like she's saying the Lamagna in front of that little area is the park that we're trying, that they were looking at. And maybe if we could clarify that sentence a little bit better. So I, don't, the, the, I, I think that she was referencing to where it is now that we would actually maybe make that area where the statue sits currently as a park. Okay. Uh, then uh, I think that's what she was right, but it's kind of not clear at the moment the way it's reading. But okay. and then on page three, second. Would you like, would you like to? I think we know what she meant there. Would you like to make an amendment that we add something in that minute to clarify that? Yes, I'd like to make an, uh, a Does motion to that, add, to clarify that a little bit more. That they would like to designate the area across from the old Thompsonville Fire Department as a pocket park. Right. And, at that, and then on page three, second um, paragraph, Commissioner Limo asked if they can do a MOU, if we could probably put in what an MOU is, because in 20 years, if somebody sees this, they may not understand what our acronym is. So you could just clarify that for the record now, because what happens is we we file the the motion the the draft minutes, okay. What's and the as they're amended, we'll a you memorandum have to check of these understanding. Minutes. That's, yeah. so Memorandum of understanding. Right. Okay. And then last paragraph, uh, Lori Parker, uh, she stated, second s sentence, she stated that she would like to see a moratorium of two years or longer, but it doesn't say what she wants a moratorium on. At that point, she wanted a moratorium. Just, just clarif some clarifications. Yeah, on large warehouses and buildings. Okay, that's me. Okay, anybody else? I, I have one uh, question that needs to be made. On page eight, halfway down, other business. And I think it's just a typo, but to, we don't have a Commissioner Griller. So I think it was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to let that 
And that's right. <laughs> 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 it happens. It happens. I'm sure it was a typo. So is, let me go through the, the, the four um, corrections to the minutes we'd like to see made. Um, on page two, old business, I'm just going to kind of paraphrase here. Uh, she stated that they would like to designate the area across from the old TiVo Fire Department as a pocket park so that the police department has more authority there for loitering and other issues. That's number one. Commissioner Limo asked if they can do a... Um, what was that? MOU, Memorandum of Understanding. Memorandum of Understanding. Thank you very much. I just had a, my brain just went dead there for a minute. Also, on the bottom of page three, um, we get to Lori Parker paragraph. She said that she would like to see a moratorium of two years or longer on large buildings. And also on page eight, um, we're going to uh, fix Commissioner Vinnie Grillo's name. So it's not Grillo, it's Grillo. Any more discussion on the minutes? Is there a motion for someone to, to accept with all the amendments, please? Motion, motion to accept the amendments. Limo, yep. seconded by Commissioner Higley to accept the minutes of May 12th with all the amendments and changes we just signified. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Vote? Yes. Oh, thank you, Kenny. <coughs> so let the record show that there was one, two, four, five, seven in favor and one abstain. Commissioner D'Antoni abstains. He, he was not present for that meeting. Moving on to item number five, town attorney report. Did everyone did receive that in our packet, an update on various cases. Now we'll move on to public participation. At this point in the meeting, the Planning and Zoning Commission welcomes comments, concerns, and opinions relating to planning and zoning in Enfield from anyone who is present, provided that no one may discuss any matter of business at this time. That is, number one, already elsewhere on the agenda. Any matter that is part of an open public hearing of the commission or any matter where a decision of the commission may be pending, that also includes any pending legal action. Is there anyone here who would like to come up and speak in front of the Planning Zoning Commission tonight? Is there anyone who would like to come up and speak in front of the Planning Zoning Commission tonight? For the last time, anyone who would like to come up and speak in front of the Planning Zoning Commission tonight? Thank you. See you now. Part of participation is closed. Now we'll move on to new public hearings. Secretary, open the hearing, please. Uh, yes. Uh, the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold public hearings at the regular meeting on Thursday, May 26, 2022, at 7 p.m. in the Town Council Chambers at 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing number 3024, 100 Elm Street, application of the interior edition of a deli. Christopher Algu. Applicant, Alliance Energy, LLC, owner, map 43, lot 15, BR zone. Thank you. Is the applicant or representative here? Please feel free to come on forward and just make sure the mic is on. If the red button should be lit. Yeah. Yep. And just identify yourself for the record, please. Uh, my name is Christopher Algu. You need to pull the mic a little closer to you if you can. Sorry. That's okay. My name is Christopher Algu. Thank you. And your, your, I'm your address, see, please? Uh, 100 Elm Street, Enfield, Connecticut. Is that where you live, Chris? No, no, that's the address of the yeah, where you live. Oh, yeah. 42 Ridge Road, Glastonbury, Connecticut. 06. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Sorry. Sure. That's all right. It's okay. Could you give us a brief overview of what you're seeking an application for tonight, please? Uh, basically, I'm just adding uh, basic deli um, to the store. Uh, through COVID, it's been a little tough getting through, so we're trying to add other, uh, you know, income coming in. And uh, we had a space available that I wasn't really utilizing as much. And uh, I just thought it would be a good idea. And it's been a few, a few years in the works, kind of going back and forth to the health department and stuff like that. So finally, we're here. <laughs> Commission questions? Yeah. I mean, basically, this is the mobile station on Elm Street, correct? Correct. And if I read through your application uh, correctly, it's not, I, I wouldn't say it's a full blown deli. It's a small oh. deli where you're making sandwiches for yeah. customers only. Correct. There's just going to be basic, you know, yeah. uh, lunch meats and bread and, you know, basic. There's no cooking or anything like that. There's no, there's no seating. It's all, it's all no, takeout. No, no, no seating. Yeah, it's all takeout. Pretty much similar to what Dunkin' Donuts is doing in the same building, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Is there any other questions for the app? 
Mr. Higley? You have enough parking for that, right? Yeah. You know, for the people to just run in and get the sandwich. Yeah, it, it would be basically the same people who are going to Dunkin'. Yep. <laughs> Might grab okay. a sandwich or something like that. Thank you know? you. Just one quick question. Since they're driving through the Dunkin', would they be able to also get the sandwich? No, no Dunkin' is a total have to separate in. entity. Okay. Yeah. Nope, thank you. I'm also seeing on the application that you have been uh, in contact with staff and there are some conditions that are, are part of this application and you seem to be agreeable to those conditions. Yeah, with the health department you're talking about or the... Uh... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, there's some site-specific conditions. The use shall be limited to the scope menu as approved by the property owner. Correct. The interior area used for the deli shall be limited to the area depicted on the floor plan that we have received from the date of January 4th. Correct. And the use shall not be operational until all necessary town event for any other permits are issued and the improvements have been inspected and approved as applicable by Building Health and WPSA. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes. Yes, Commissioner Helinski. Go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah, I had a, I had a, I had a question. question. Uh, I'm, not I'm not sure if this shows, shows in, the, the, uh, in the report we got, we got but uh, have the owners uh, officially approved uh, this change at this point? Yeah. The property yeah. owners? Yeah, they signed a letter. Oh, it was provided. Okay. It was provided in the materials. Okay, I, I just didn't see that. I may have missed this. Okay, okay thank, thank you. you. No problem. Commissioner Lamo? Yes, I was just going to ask, are you going to be open? I know the gas station is open 24 hours. Would a deli be open 24 hours? No, most likely not. I mean, the hours will probably be lunch into dinner. You know what I mean? Okay. Not, not 24 hours. <laughs> it's a little difficult to, to Thank hold. You. <laughs> Any other questions? You can sit right there. Is there anyone in the public that would like to speak for or against this application? Is there anyone in the public that would like to come up and speak anything about this application? Any more? Any staff have anything they want to add for this in this application? No, fairly simple. Okay. I believe. Any more questions from the commission on this application? Anything else you'd like to add? No, thank you for okay. your time. Make like seeing that. I'll make entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Higley uh, to close the public hearing, seconded by Commissioner D'Antoni. All those in favor, sing by saying aye. The show is unanimous to close the public hearing. Take a motion to approve. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve public hearing number 3024 uh, in accordance with the uh, uh, motion prepared by staff dated May 26, 2022, uh, with the 18 conditions uh, attached. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Secretary Petronella, seconded by Commissioner Olimo. Any discussion on the approval? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Yep. Uh, one second. Uh, Louis Fiore? Four. Uh, Virginia Higley? Four. Linda DeGray? Four. John Petronella is four. Uh, Francis Olimo? Four. Uh, Kenneth Helensky? Four. four. Uh, Christian D'Antonio. Four. Thank you. And let the record show it was unanimous, 7 nothing. Your application has been approved. Okay, Good thank luck you. to you. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. Nice okay. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Secretary, we'll move on to the next uh, uh, application, yep. PH3036. Uh, yeah, the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold public hearings at the regular meeting on Thursday, May 26, 2022, at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing number 3036, 33 Palumba Drive, application for a used car dealership, Gale Toyota, Inc., applicant, uh, Machem LLC owner, map 57, lot 343, BR zone. Thank you. Is the applicant a representative here? Please come on up and identify yourself for the record, please. Good evening. Michael Green. And address, please? 687 Hall Hill Road, Summers, Connecticut. Thank you. Can you briefly describe uh, this application, please? Or take as much time as you like, as you said briefly. <laughs> okay. Um, we, we just, it's a buy center to buy vehicles um, from, from the public. Uh, private party transactions to, to Gail Toyota. Um, 
It's located across the street, 33 Paloma Drive. Well, Gail Twitter is at 50 Paloma Drive. Um, we currently meet remotely, meet at, meet at customers' houses or at the dealership to, to complete the transaction. Um, we'd like to be able to, to meet at that location, 33 Paloma Drive, and uh, be able to complete the transaction there. Um, we are not selling any vehicles there. There is no sales. There is no financing. There is no transaction, really, on our end. We're buying vehicles from private party sellers. Uh, that's what we're looking to do. So it would be, it would be with, a, with a special um, condition. Are you all set? Yeah. Go Questions ahead. from the commission? Commissioner DeGray. Um, uh, well, I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. Probably a lot of questions, but on your website, it's you've got cars listed for sale uh -huh. as the buy center, and you've got two locations here in Enfield and in West Springfield. So, do you sell the cars in Enfield, or do you sell the cars in West Springfield? The the cars are located at 50 Pluma Drive on Gilswood as well. Okay. All cars for sale. It's just the, the, the crazy J scratch and dent. That's the way we're presenting it. It could be wrong in, in, in the sense of it's it's not the same business, really. It's not the same department. Um, so. Then can you help clarify? The, that those vehicles are for sale at Gale Toyota. Um, they're branded crazy J scratch and dent. Um, they're just bunched together on the website because it's both crazy j that's the whole crazy j is is the buy center it's that's the kind of brand branding that we're going with um but there's no sales going on there's no inventory um being presented for sale being uh at 33 Paloma drive then that ad is very confusing because if i went on the website to buy center of enfield i see cars for sale I I'm can gonna separate go that to if, I mean, buy center of Enfield to buy my car. I'm not going to go to Gale Toyota because that's not what the ad says. And right. it's very small at the bottom is associated with Gale Toyota. So I can I'd, separate that. That's that's no problem. I can pull the inventory off the site. That I, I didn't see it that way. But I mean, that's not. We're not getting traffic I, in that way. I'm not saying that. But I'm just kind of confused because you're saying you're not selling cars, but your ads we're not. are we're saying not. you're selling cars on the website. So that that was my first question, and then I got this layout of the um, property, and you've got. 17 spaces for unit four um and i don't know exactly where unit four is but it's all says for gale toyota I, i'm just kind of concerned about the spaces because you've got porter and chester there you've got firestone over there you've got enterprise over there you've got shine doctor over there and i think there's another there's a lot of cars over there and I, w I was over there yesterday and parking lot was pretty full yeah so I'm just wondering if there's enough parking for I mean it would be no business it would be no different than what we're doing now as far as parking spaces um, right now my used cars are reconditioned over there um, so anything that's bought and that, that, that's purchased or taken in trade goes over there for reconditioning it's over it's over there for a short period of time matter of days um and then it goes back over to our lot or it's wholesaled um so it would be there would be no difference to parking there would be no change to parking the only difference would be the, the customer arriving with the vehicle um to be inspected that's about a half hour process yeah because you're saying you need 40 to 60 spaces uh, this that, is that your narrative confusing. this is not my narrative approximately 40 to 60 spaces Per month, uh, including the including the 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 inside the the bays where the vehicles are being worked on, where they're being stored and cleaned, and um, that there's sufficient space. There's thirty, I think, thirty three spots right there, and then plus plus the cleanup shop. So okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Questions. Absolutely. Mr. Chair? Yes. 
Um, Mr. Lutsky, go ahead. I have a question. Go ahead, you can go for me, please. Go ahead. And a comment, I guess. Um, I travel to the post office uh, quite often, and um, I noticed quite a lot of people crossing the street from uh, Gale Toyota over to the uh, Firestone area where your, your other facility is. And I'm just concerned that that's a safety issue. I mean, they're kind of picking their way across to the stop sign uh, four corners there where you go into the post office or either to Gale Toyota. And it's a mix of people. It's some, some of them are dressed in ties, which I assume they're salesmen or managers. And others are, are look like they're, they're workers, mechanics, those type of people. And I, I'm just wondering if uh, we shouldn't try to uh, consider having some kind of safety crosswalk there in that area. I know it's not, there's not a lot of speed there, but it gets pretty busy at times. And I've seen people crossing there uh, quite, you know, at different times of the day, in early morning, noon time, later in the day, and so on. So I'm just, I just have a safety concern about that. I, I can't disagree with that. I mean, that's, that's, it's, uh, yeah, we've had, we've had a few incidents in the, in the, over the, over the years, people run that stop sign, so. But. So, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure. sure. I feel you remember of the planning zone, but I'm not sure how we would uh, recommend that that happens uh, or get it to some agency that I could maybe take a look at. It. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Do you want to respond to that, or would that be direct, directly related to, to this uh, approval here, or disapproval, or? Could be. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yep. Sir Lamo? Yeah, on that safety issue, Mr. Linsky brought up, it looks like traffic police officer approved. Mm. Um, no detail behind it, uh, just says approved. I don't see any report with it, but um, I mean, this I'm not sure if does that, does that answer our question for the safety? I, I would just say that I think the traffic officer's comment is relative to vehicular traffic, so he probably did not see any conflicts relative to vehicle trips generated or what he might have assumed would be generated by it. So I don't think his comment has any relevance to the pedestrian concern that you have. Some members have. Ultimately, the, the Thank you. being able to do business there would, would reduce the amount of traffic going across the street, too. So, because right now there's a lot of running back and forth because we do have staff over there. So, Mr. Chair, I have a comment. Uh, with, with respect to that, uh, can, can we put a referral into the traffic uh, safety officer to, to request that a, a, a pedestrian walk be, be put across there, you know, painted, hashed? Um, Walkway, because that that I believe is not there now, right? There's no there's no crossing there. No. So so if you put that walkway there, I th I think if you know that's probably a function of the town because I, I I see it too. I'm at the post office every day, and 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 I'm not saying it's your traffic. I I think that there's some all kinds of tra uh, pedestrian traffic crossing there, uh, whatever it may be, um, people who are waiting and, and so forth. But I I think it'd be a good idea to make a referral if if it's possible to the traffic safety or DPW to do that. I see them painting, repainting them all over uh, town right now, all up and down Elm Street and so forth. But uh, uh, I, I'm not suggesting to make it a condition of approval, but um, but if, if it's something that we can do uh, as a referral, and I'm sure that they'll have no problem with that. Yeah, we, we could certainly alert them to the, the commission's concern yeah. and the possible need for one. Also, um, with respect to this application, I, I believe what's driving it is the de uh, uh, motor vehicle department um, needs approval from planning and zoning for you to operate or f for you to get a license on that location. Is that is that what I understand? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, because to sell used cars, you, you need uh, uh, you need a license. Uh, is that is that correct? Yep. From the state or DMV. Yeah, that's the that's the kind of the wedge we're kind of dropped into, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so 
and, and, and I believe we, there's some additional information, according to your, uh, uh, according to staff comments, that that we're that we're still waiting for. Yes. So, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. So basically, based on I guess, oh, did you want to respond or? Well, I think the point relative to DMV is really that's the gist of it. it, it the the area is clearly automotive oriented. I think it was intended to be automotive oriented from the get go. So the the use in a land use con you know context isn't really a concern, notwithstanding concerns about kind of pedestrian traffic between 50 and 33, which we'll take a look at. Um, but I don't think we've really answered the question about by center versus Gale. Right. I'm, I'm still unclear right. on that. And I think it's easily resolved. And the purpose, I think, of tonight was to get that resolved so that we could move on and draft a motion and have these board members approve it. You can go on and buy center can do what they're doing. When buy center buys cars, they sell them. They would wholesale them or, or I mean, okay. it's, it's Gail Toyota that's buying the, the check from Gail Toyota. Okay. When Buy Center sells the cars, Buy Center is selling the cars. Buy Center needs a DMV approval to sell the cars, right? Yes or no? This came to us by way of an enforcement action. Right. Yeah. By the ZEO. So it's, that's why we're here. So we're just trying to figure it out so we can get yeah. move forward and, and get on to other things. It's it's Gail's buy center. It's it's Gail's buy center of Enfield. Okay. That's really what the, the, the actual name is assigned. So um, the problem with that is DMV is we understand it and we can try to get more information. But as I understand it, what Rick is saying that the DMV is saying is that Buy Center can't do that at 33 under your licenses yeah. that come at 50. So that's the rub. So I'm not sure that this board or the staff here or Rick can resolve that for you. I don't think anyone really has an issue. Gail, Buy Center, Johnny, Bob, Sally selling cars at 33. It's okay. it's all automotive. So this this is unfortunately kind of the sticking point that we need to get past. Okay. So how do we do that? I was going to write the approval with conditions that the plan that was submitted be modified to label the unit by center, not Gale. Okay. Okay. And that the, the approval be issued in the name of by center specifically exclusively so that we can resolve the issues with ZBA so that they'll actually sign the site plan so you can get the K7 and by center can go do what they want. That's what I was going to do. Okay. I didn't want to do that and then have some pushback that why did you do that that way we don't want to do that. So I'd rather have some kind of consensus about that if we can do that. If that's the I mean Sounds like that might be the best. It sounds way. like the only thing DMV is going to let us do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's all I wanted to do. So if you have more questions, by all means, ask questions. I'm satisfied now that I can write something for you. Come back in two weeks, whenever the next meeting is. Thank you, because I, I was my, I was going to lead the interest that you got to where you got to. So thank you. That answered all. I was just going to be the lead man, point man on that, so that all got straight to you, so you understand our our predicament. Okay. Um, so if you have a second, Mr. Higley. Now I'm now I'm confused. If it's by center across the street from Gale, right. and by center sell their cars under the by sell seller name at Gales. No, by center would have a separate K seven, a separate DMV approval, a separate bond for well, DMV, separate everything with DMV. Yeah. What by center does at that point, who they sell them to, for what the arrangement is, not sure that we really care. So it's have a okay for them approval. to sell at Gale Toyota? No, well, what, they, what well, they're going to do is they're going to sell as buy center, and they're going to have a, a, a used car sales license for exactly. 33 for buy center. Okay, and you're okay with that? So you won't be selling at Gale's? Well, re he could no, sell, he could, he could resale. Right. Yeah, he could, yeah. no, right. But under his name, he will not be selling at Gale's, right? By center. By center. Right. By, center. So by center is going to be a 33. Right. right. So right. you won't be selling at Gales, correct? Not directly, no. Yeah. Pardon me? No. 
No, no it would be won't. selling to okay. Gail at that point. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Thank you. Right. Okay, we all. Yep. Cool. All good. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, go ahead. Just, 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 just to clarify now, yep. uh, the buy center is a separate entity, which will be getting approval, which will also be getting the license. It, it's 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 a separate entity. That you're going to have your own separate company, insurances and so forth. So. Um, just so that you, yeah, I mean, you, you understand that, correct? I, 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 yeah, I do. If that's that's the way, it seems like that's the way it has to be. So yeah, it'll be two separate entities and entirely different. So, so I would suggest just procedurally that we leave the hearing open. Yep. Come back in two weeks. We'll wrap it up. Yep. You'll have the draft for it. You can give me a call and. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Do we, do we want to hear from any? Uh, oh, yeah. any or public? public? I, yeah, I don't we'll know hear, if it was. I'm we'll sorry. Hear from, you can stay right there for a second. Any other? Questions for the applicant at this point? We're going to, but is there anyone in the public that would like to come up and speak for or against this application? Is there anyone in the public that would like to come up and speak for or against this application? Is there anyone in the public that would like to come up and speak for or against this application? Okay, thank you. I think we're done with the questions. I think everyone understood the game plan. So at this point in time, we want to leave this public hearing open. And I think we just want to. I guess, for the record, we want to table it and move on until the next meeting so they can rectify the situations here. June 9th. June 9th. June 9th. So is there a motion to table this public hearing? I move we table the public hearing to the June 9th meeting. A motion made by Vice Chairman Second. Higgins, seconded by Secretary Petronella. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, somebody saying aye. Aye. Let the record aye. show you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Holinsky. Let the record show that uh, unanimous 7 nothing. We are tabling, keeping this public hearing open, but tabling it to the next meeting. And let you work with the, um, with the staff to get this rectified, okay? Thank you. Okay. Yep. Thanks for coming up. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. We'll move on to the next one. Whenever the secretary's record uh, ready, and that's uh, PH 3038. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold public hearings at their regular meeting on Thursday, May 26, 2022 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers at 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing number 3034MA1706 King Street, zone change request from BG to I-1 Josh Sullivan applicant, Burlington Coat Factory, Warehouse Corporation. No, sorry. Wrong, wrong, wrong one. Mayfield. May Mayfield. Oh, we're on Mayfield? Yeah. Mayfield. I'm sorry. Oh, it's, oh, this was read last. Well, I read it in last. So, so the public hearing is still open? Yeah. Do we have to read it again to open it? Okay. Yeah, they were supposed to attend the last meeting, yeah. couldn't attend for some right. reason, yeah. so we bumped it up. So we have Mayfield. Do we need to make a motion to take that off the table or just? No. No? No. Okay. Could please identify yourself for the record. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tim Kuhn. I'm a professional engineer with J.R. Russo and Associates here tonight representing Mayfield Place LLC, uh, along with Lou Gilman, who is in the audience, if there's any questions. Um, we are here requesting a modification to allow a solid vinyl fence to replace the earthen berm along the common property line with Dartmoor. Now, we did submit a site plan which shows that common property line. Uh, unfortunately, my easel, somebody must have bent the leg because I can't open one of them. So <laughs> I can put it up so at least you can see it from this table. And then if, if anybody in the public wants to see it, we can turn it to show them later. But um, as you're probably all aware, Mayfield Place is a 340-unit apartment complex on 70 acres at the uh, intersection of Mayfield Drive and North Maple Street. This um, apartment complex was approved by Planning and Zoning Special Use Permit in 2013. And it is nearing completion. Um, but one thing in the approval that was included in the site plan was that there was to be a, a berm that ran along the property line, the common property line with Dartmoor, which is here to the east, this being the, the Mayfield Place development. And that berm was going to be like a four-foot high landscape berm uh, to provide screening. Um, 
Recently, the owner met with uh, representatives of Dartmoor to discuss substituting a six foot high solid fence to replace the berm. And they agreed that the fence is acceptable as long as it is maintained in perpetuity. And a copy of that agreement signed by the president of the Dartmoor Homeowners Association was submitted with the package that, uh, that I believe you received. So the fence actually has already been installed. I don't know if anybody's been out there. Um, I did provide photographs showing the fence. Um, it extends from the back of the property about 400 feet down to around the, the midway of this last unit. And you will notice if you were out there that this whole area is wooded, that really the only Dartmoor unit that is nearby is located up here. And compliments of Google Earth. <laughs> I did, I was actually able to find um, an aerial photograph from May of 2021. This is the most recent one I could find, but you can see the Enfield development as well as Dartmoor and along with the nearest units of Dartmoor. Um, so this is the location of the fence to replace the berm. We did receive a copy of the staff comments uh, where they did indicate that staff has no concerns with this application, but they did stipulate two conditions. Uh, one being that they'd like to see the fence extended an additional 175 feet, and the second being that the fence be maintained in perpetuity. And the applicant has no problem with the second one. Uh, however, um, we would prefer not to have to extend the fence. So we would like the first one eliminated. And as you can see from the aerial photograph, extending the 175 foot further toward Mayfield Drive is really along an area where there is over about 275 feet of dense forest between us and the nearest, actually, and the driveway for Dartmoor, not even the, the, the nearest units on the other side. So. This, it is heavily wooded. Um, you can see from the photographs, I have other photographs that Luke took today. Um, the photographs that I took were taken in the winter. Um, but the, uh, really we feel that this, the existing trees already provide a sufficient buffer um, and screening to the Dartmoor uh, residences. And we would, uh, feel that this extension of the fence is, is not necessary, and we would just ask that that condition be eliminated. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Questions from the commission? For sure, DeGray. Um, I did go to this site twice. A couple of weeks ago, trees weren't completely full blown, went and to Dartmark. Dartmoor, whatever they call it, Dartmoor, and could see actually through the trees because there wasn't an, that many leaves. Um, and then I went again this week, and now the trees are in full foliage. And you're right, you can't see. But during the winter months, and we do have six, seven months of winter in New England, whether we like it or not, um, those people in those um, condos closer to the main road would be able to see. So I really don't feel that we should take out that 175 foot um, extension of the fence, only because of privacy um, in that area. That's all. Thank you. I tend to concur with uh, Commissioner DeGray. I mean, basically, you know, I, I, you guys have been in this company has been very good neighbors and, and good partners here in Enfield, no doubt about it. Um, so I certainly want to bring that point up. The guys have been great. But I, I do tend to agree with you about the fence. I think it should be extended all the way as staff has recommended. You know, you gave a nice presentation and a good pitch for it. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I do. I have no problem at this point, but I do want the conditions to stay in. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah. Any, I agree. Any other any questions? No. Commissioner Limo? 
So the point that you brought up about not extending the fence, is there some circumstances to put the fence in, topography, uh, the ground? Is there not, not nice digging? Why would you uh, not want to do it? I guess I want to ask. Well, frankly, I believe it's just a belief that it's an unnecessary expense because it doesn't provide much benefit okay. as far as the screening goes. Is so it's more a monetary thing. It's nothing to do with the ground or actually no. installing the fence. No. Thank you. Um, is, is it my understanding that w where that 175 feet is originally there was a berm there? The berm did extend the, the additional 175 feet on the approved right, so plan, you, correct. So you're deleting the berm and you're proposing, you're suggesting uh, to put nothing back in, in that place or to not put the fence in there uh, in lieu of the berm. So I would have to concur with uh, Commissioner uh, DeGray about, I, I think the fence should be extended per the staff recommendations. Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Hilmanski. Uh I also concur with Commissioner DeGray's uh, comments about extending the fence. I'd be in favor of extending the fence. Okay, hey, thank you very much. Seeing I'm just going to see if there's any public would like to speak. For Is there anyone in the public that would like to? Any, could you do me a favor? Can you? Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Is there anyone in the public that would like to speak for or against this application? Is there anyone in the public that would like to speak for or against this application? Is there anyone in the public that like to speak for or against this application? Seeing none, does staff have any comments they like that other than what they mentioned in, in the packet? No, but I, I think you picked up on the salient point, which was that the reason I included that condition, I didn't think about the seasonal issues, which I think is an excellent point, very relevant. But the reason I included that was that the original plan had the berm extending for that, that distance. So. <laughs> They could have asked for a different modification. They could have asked to, to get to Commissioner Petronella's point, they could have asked to eliminate that section of the berm and no fence right, right. in that, but that's not really what they asked for. The other part that I just want to note is that um, I'm not sure what Dartmoor and, and this group agreed to or didn't agree to or what their expectations were or understandings, and I didn't want to you know, do something or suggest something that would get us in yep. the middle. So yep, to totally speak. understood. Yep. So that's all. Thank you. Yep, Mr. Ryan. So the berm was going to be put up. It's not up yet. Correct. The, the, the modification is to eliminate the berm and just put up the fence. But in, 107, in, in a part in question, 175 feet would have, yeah. would have nothing. Correct. So the fence is less expensive than a berm. If you're going to put a four-foot high berm, if it's a monetary thing, I think the fence would look nicer as well. The fence would look nicer. I, I believe the application was to for the fence as it is shown on the, the plan, which is the fence that exists there now, to replace all of the berm. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions from the commission? Seeing none, is there a motion to close this public hearing? So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Higley, seconded by Commissioner DeGray to close the public hearing. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Commissioner Helinski. Motion to approve. So moved. Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve public hearing number 3038370 North Maple Road modification of the approved site plan and special permit number 2781 to allow substitution of a vinyl fence for, for the required landscape berm along the easterly property line, Mayfield Place LLC, owner applicant, map 78, lot 30 with the 18 conditions listed. Thank you, is there a second? Seconded by second. Commissioner DeGray. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, whenever you're ready, Mr. Secretary, uh, roll yes. call vote. Yes, uh, Lou Fiore. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Francis Salimo. Four. Uh, Ken Helensky. Four. four. Christian D'Antonio. Four. And John Petronella is four. Thank you. Let the record show it's unanimous seven to nothing to accept that. And that application with the conditions. Okay, seems like everyone's getting ready. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Secretary, well, now we'll move on to PH 3034 uh, uh, MA. Uh, I'll get that one memorized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold public hearing at their regular meeting on Thursday, May 26, 2022 at 7 p.m. in a, a Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following applications. 
public hearing number 3034 MA 1706 King Street zone change request from BG to I-1 Josh Sullivan applicant Burlington Coke factory warehouse corporations owner uh, map 14 lot 26 BG zone thank you is the applicant a representative here yes yep. Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, uh, I'm Attorney Thomas Fahey. I have an office in Windsor Locks at 487 Spring Street, and I represent the applicant this evening, uh, which is True Storage, and present with me this evening is uh, Jason We Met, who's a project engineer, and Emil Bouzier, who's a, a part of the ownership team, part of the contract uh, option, and also an attorney. Uh, we're here tonight, obviously, to talk about a change of zone application. A couple of housekeeping things to just put on the record is the sign uh, for this public hearing has been on uh, uh, King Street for well more than 10 days. I'm sure if you've driven up and down, you've seen it. And we made, uh, because the property is bifurcated between the town of uh, East Windsor and Enfield, uh, we made, uh, in fact, I talked to Matt about this, uh, we made sure that the uh, sign was on the Enfield portion of the property. <clears throat> and um, well, I no noticed in the record that uh, you've got the Krog report in, uh, and uh, they didn't have any uh, opposition to the uh, change zone application. And I noticed also there was a, a record of the notice to the town of East Windsor, which you're required to do by statute because it's within 500 feet. And uh, could could someone put the? Uh, uh, I understand. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're so testing my. You think I can see that far? <laughs> <laughs> I'm old now. Of course, I can't see that far without my glasses. I got glasses. Far right. Hey, Commissioner Holinsky, once he brings his PowerPoint presentation up, I won't be able to see you anymore. But I can verbally still hear you. Okay. Yeah, Okay. Are you Jose? Yeah. yeah. Couldn't tell by the resemblance. Right? <laughs> That's exactly right. I yeah. well, now what are we here? Don't leave it. I can't read that. So what, what am I hitting here? Right there? Yeah. No. No, it's the wrong one. I believe it's a third one. Nope. Oh, is it below that or? It's above that one. Right there. Come on, baby. There we go. Okay. Now. Make a big. There we go. Okay, perfect. That's great. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Alex. Um, the uh, the property is in purple. Okay, our pro the property we're talking about this evening is right here, 1706 King. And it, as I said, the town line is right here. Uh, I'm pointing with the southern boundary of the Enfield piece. And this drive that uh, and by the way, this property most of you probably remembered is was the, known as the Cohos Common Commons. It's more uh, it was developed more than 40 years ago. And interestingly, um, it was developed uh, in both in East Windsor and Enfield by variances, that both towns gave them variances to operate cohos, which was a, basically a clothing, I, I don't know if you'd call it, it was not really a wholesale, it was more like a, um, I'd call it kind of on a higher end uh, retail clothing store. The building was actually built, this, this line I, those of you who have seen the plans, actually goes right through the building. Yep. So the building is built both on, both on in East Windsor and in uh, Enfield. The road, the main entrance, though, is Prospect Hill Terrace there, which is actually in East Windsor. Um, and we actually have an, another application pending before the town of East Windsor for a um, uh, special, for, uh, I'm sorry, site plan approval. Now, um, this process started, I approached, I think I talked to Lori first, and we uh, went in for an uh, administrative review team hearing, which was, which was uh, I believe Jason was there. Uh, and it was very helpful because that all of the members of the ART team uh, got to ask questions regarding 
everything from fire sprinklers to the nature of the use. And um, the, the consensus of that meeting was that um, the, uh, there was support for the uh, use, which is which uh, after Burlington left, they left because uh, based upon my research and understanding is that the retail market, it wasn't working for retail any longer, I think for a lot of reasons, not the least of which was that the whole nature of retail is much more online today. And as you all know, they moved to a different location and, uh, and they, this building is now empty. It's an ideal site for what the uh, uh, true storage people want to do because they don't have to make any changes whatsoever to the, uh, at, at this point, to the uh, exterior of the building uh, because they're going to do uh, uh, you know, air conditioned uh, and completely uh, uh, indoor storage. Um, so uh, the reason this is in purple is because if you look at your plan of development, um, they have this area, have had for a number of years now, the most recent plan of development that I think um, uh, Goldman York did, uh, I looked at it earlier this evening, uh, uh, had the same map as part of your future use plan. And the, fu the future use plan, all this has a big circle around it like this uh, for this property to become, uh, for, for uh, the encouragement of uh, industrial one uses. The use directly across the street is also industrial one. So while this is now a BG use and a different color in, on your zoning map, it's our intent to, to bring it into an industrial one use where warehousing is a permitted use and then proceed with our site plan application uh, in June. When site plan application is in with all the details and traffic reports and all the things you required. So, um, and obviously I, I believe uh, in your packet is also the staff recommendation which has uh, agrees that this is uh, consistent with your plan of development. So the, the, um, the standard in Connecticut regarding zone changes um, uh, for zoning, zoning commissions is that when time and experience reasonably indicates the need for revision, that's supportive of a, of a, a change of zone. I think this is a perfect example of that because you've all seen and lived through what's happened over 40 years at this particular site. Um, now I have, I, I don't, we didn't have any plans for our project engineer to speak tonight with a formal presentation because that's probably more of a, a, a site plan thing that is a, a change of zone, but they're both he and um, an email are um, prepared to uh, answer any questions you have along, along with me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Attorney Fahey. Any questions from the commission? Commissioner D'Antonio. Yeah, um, I mean, looking at the map the, with the proposed changes, uh, not, not on the applicant's property, but there's a state of Connecticut property. Uh, I thought I saw a mention somewhere, it's DOT. Uh, do, do, do we have more clarification on that property? Because the proposal is to keep that little sliver of land zoned for BG. So I'm wondering if there's any potential to just clean up the zoning for consistency, can they operate out of uh, out of an I one zone? Uh, but um, yeah, so I guess firstly, what what is the state of Connecticut property there? Well, I guess a couple of different answers. Um, yes, the town could rezone it, the state That's piece. Um, it, w it would be really of no material benefit because it's owned by the state. So the state is, you know, they have superior authority over municipal zoning so we could zone it whatever we'd want and they could effectively do whatever they wanted it, it really wouldn't matter so it's kind of this vestigial landlocked piece i don't know the history of it how it got there what it's i'm not even sure it's if it's used um for anything at all um it may even be something that the state want might want to dispose of at some point in time not sure but you know we could rezone it but um, it wouldn't really be of any particular benefit right. um, to anyone. So, yeah. so state trumps any town zoning. What, so they could put anything they want there. So, and, and, I, and I don't know the history of that site either. Yeah, well, I mean, if that's the case, then, I mean, what, what is, I mean, just for the sake of, like, 
clean like the whole point of this besides the applicant coming in here is to to update the zoning map to reflect the more industrial area i mean if we could do that without any repercussions for the state yeah and then, no, that, I guess, and then that area will be zoned industrial for the yeah, future if the state well, I don't think objects to doing that the scope of this particular application mm -hmm. was obviously their interest in yeah. in the burlington piece so they weren't i don't think in any position to to do that right. when as we do the pocd and as we kind of do reg and map amendments as a follow-up to the pocd that's certainly something that we could sure. we could do easily oh. i don't think the state would object Okay. And yeah, don't forget that thought. We'll move forward <laughs> yeah. with the rest of the year on those other items. We can Keep tackle that, that issue at that point. <laughs> yep, Mr. Chair, you. just for Commissioner yeah, Lyman. Mr. D'Antonio, I, I think, and I don't know 100%, but it's when tight. 91 right. was constructed, you'll see a few of these along the roadway in Enfield because there was going to be rest areas. Right. And right. that might be what those are. I know there's a few more. Um, actually, one over by you, um, where you live. Um, it could be. They just, it's been like that forever, and it's just there. So I think, not 100%, but just to give you a little background. A piece of history. <laughs> yeah, a piece of history. Well, let's there's, get, a, there's a few of them. Let's get back to this app. So yeah. any other questions for this applicant at this point? Can I just respond to that? Yep, uh, go and, ahead. And if, if that was something that the town and, uh, wanted to follow up, I don't think you could do it with this application right, because right, right. there hasn't been any notice to the state and have to be separately notified. Absolutely. Totally agree. Thank you. Any questions for this applicant at this point? Seeing none, is there anyone in the public who would like to speak for or against this application? Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak for or against this application? Well, last time, anyone like to speak for or against this application? Seeing none, does staff have anything else they want to add to this particular application? No, uh, it's consistent with POCD, yeah. current POCD, uh, presumably the future POCD, and we did include, I think, an effective date recommendation yeah. And, yeah. and some findings, if you yep. will. Yep. I would tend to concur. This is definitely um, in condition with our current POCD, and I would anticipate uh, with, the, with the new updated one that's going to be coming out this year. So this certainly is, is compliant with that. So, um, Seems like commission questions are done. Hearing that, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Motion made by Vice Chairman Higley, seconded by Good. Commissioner Alima to close the public hearing. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Let the record aye. show. Aye. Thank you. Um, thank you, Commissioner Helinski. So, um, uh, Alex, could you come on back in so we can get this display off so we can get Commissioner Helinski? There we go. There he is. There he is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman right. members so, of the Commission. Yeah, don't go away. We're not, we're not quite done yet. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. And so public hearing is closed. Is there a motion to approve? Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve public hearing number 3034 MA 1706 King Street Zoning Map Amendment from BG to I-1 Josh Sullivan Applicant. Burlington Co. Factory, Warehouse Corporation, owner, um, map 14, lot 26, with, uh, I see no conditions. Uh. We have conditions. No conditions, but no, there's a no, finding and effective no, date. With right. no conditions. Okay, so there's a second. Second. Seconded by, seconded by Commissioner Holinsky. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Uh, Lou Fiore. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Francis Salimo. Four. Uh, Ken Holinsky. Four. Uh, Christian D'Antonio. Four. And John Petronella's four. And just for the record, the finding will be the commission finds that this application is consistent with the current POCD and will implement the commission's adopted land use plan recommendations for this area. And the effective date of this will be 8.30 a.m. Thursday, June 9th. Thank you. You're all set. Thank you very much. Yep. We're just going to recess for five minutes just for um, a break for people with allergies. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs>
call this meeting back to order. Thank you, everyone, for the quick recess. Let's give Alex a second here to make sure he's on with us. Mr. Secretary, we will now go to PH 3041. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah. Uh, Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold public hearings at the regular meeting on Thursday, May 26, 2022, at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing number 3041, 98 Prospect Street, application for outdoor storage, David Weeks, Town of Enfield owner, Map 21, Lot 20, I-1 Zone. Thank you. The applicant or the representative, please come forward and identify themselves for the record. And I believe the mic was probably still left yep, on. Yeah, it's still on. Okay. My name is David Weeks. Uh, I work for Kelly Flat Lumber, which is 92 Prospect Street. I live in East Long Meadow, 56 Fields Drive, uh, and I've lived there for the last two years. Okay. Thank you. Could you briefly describe uh, yeah, the application? What we, what we have here, do, does everybody have a map of this? I believe you do. Yep. Mm -hmm. What, what we'd like to do here is to have outside storage on this piece of property. It's approximately 30, 35,000 square feet, which is less than an acre. And we want to put outside storage on this thing because it's a Brownsfield. Does everybody understand it's a Brownsfield piece of property and it's contaminated? And we, we had to come up with a plan so that the town would approve, that Titan Bond actually would look at, that these people looked at. And... Uh, that they can go ahead and clean the piece of property up and then we would take title to it and do whatever we have to do to make make this happen which is paving encapsulating the the, the bad soil drainage which instead of bringing the water to the rear will bring the water to the front in, into the in, into the sanitary not the sanitary sir the storm sewers right, right. uh it, it, it 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 drops off quite a bit, so that's why you have in the back here, it, it drops off quite a bit. So it has to be approved so we can buy it and so we can clean it up and move forward. Yeah. Any questions, though? Questions from the commission? We've all seen that. It's, a, it's an ugly piece of property. Yeah. You know, and we're going we're, we're gonna to try to clean it. We're, we're definitely going gonna to put a fence in front so it would be very safe and whatnot. Just a comment. I'm I'm very familiar with that piece of land and dealt with it for many years, as you know. Remember when it burnt down? Yeah, yeah, I do. And I'm um, happy to see something being done right, with okay. it. Thanks. That's my comment. <laughs> just out of curiosity, just for my own, uh, Mr. Weiss, my own historical, was that where the oil company used to be? Yeah, yeah. used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Arietti? Yeah, yeah. Arietti's yeah. oil. Yeah, there was a bunch of gas pumps there yeah. for years. Yeah, that became, there, 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 there's, there's stuff in the ground there that we don't want to talk about. No. <laughs> I'm <laughs> right. Right. glad to see of. this moving forward. This, right. this has been a we'll headache for a long time. It. Thank you. So in my other life, I had to deal with that this piece old of you, you know, yeah. you were there. Yes. Yep. Many times. Many times, yes. Any other questions, Mr. Petronella? Yeah, uh, I assume storage is going to be outside lumber. Storage. Yeah, outside for lumber and, and it, it could be shingles, tracks, lumber, yeah. you know, uh, and, 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 and most of it will be paved. Yeah. And, and enca I, I, we'll be encapsulating most of the lousy soil. And any, any, the soil in the back will have to be yeah. good. You know yeah. I mean? Yeah. Also, and all the, in the in the rainwater now is going forward rather than back. Backwards. Yeah. Yep. Also, does this fall into that? Uh, this is industrial property, and, and this this will fall into that uh, that new uh, uh, storage outside storage. So they got yep. fifty percent. Uh, I think is what is what we yep. agreed to. And, and uh, that, yeah. There were also yeah. multiple variances that were issued oh, yeah. by yep. the ZBA. Saw the variances yeah. to, yeah, to accommodate this. Yeah. Yeah. So if, we, I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, uh, uh, yeah, uh, okay. Uh, so, if it, so this is town-owned currently, and, yeah. and um, we as staff have been working with um, the organization to develop the remediation action plan for the cleanup. So that's going to be funded through another source. But we don't want to take ownership of the property, and it was next to Kelly for debt, and so we spoke I have with Mr. Weeks. have a purchase sale agreement with you people. Around. Yes, right. So we and so we've been working on this for years, yep. literally. I mean, yep. since almost since before I started, which was almost four years ago. 
So we're finally at this point. So, and it borders our piece. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And it just makes sense. No one else is really going to want to be able. To, no one else could really do anything there. Right. So it just it makes sense to just have. Uh, Kelly for debt expand into the area um, for more outside storage. Yep. Well said, John. Yeah. Commissioner D'Antonio. Uh, yep. I just wanted to clarify what uh, what percentage do you have an idea of how much is going to be paved? Is it probably the, the close entire to area? 80, 90 percent? Because it drops off in the back. That will be uh, grass. They'll that will yep. be whatever. Yeah. The the grass. original um remediation action plan actually called for the entire site to be paved but um they backed off on that a little bit i think by removing some slope. soils yeah. yeah so but it, i would say 80 85 percent consider we would we would like to pave the whole thing but because it drops you know because we need the space uh, in that space we won't be able to use but it'd be grass or or, or whatever it has to be and that's the space that drops off towards the railroad tracks. In towards the, the railroad tracks. Right. That's the, that's the yeah. right. And, and one, one thing the town engineer says, since we're moving 80% of the water back, and it's right. not going that way anymore. Right. So it's, right. That's improvement in itself. It's improvement right. inside yeah. itself. Yep. Any other questions? Yes, yep. Commissioner Hilsky, go ahead. Yes, Mr. Hilsky. Um, are you confident that the uh, remediation plan is going to... Uh, cap the facility properly so that it would be safe for your employees to work there? And um, would there be a need for them to wear any kind of protective equipment or anything while they're working? That's a good there? question. She can help me answer this, but Titan Bond oversees this. The town hires somebody, and then Titan Bond will oversee what they do there. Am I, am I saying this correctly? That, or, that or is or? correct. And we will never be able to dig into that again. We'll right. we never wait. be able to put a building up in there. I mean, you just because it's d the d state will be monitoring this anyway, right? Over, and uh, so it's yeah, I'm just concerned that there, you know, there, there might be some residual outgassing from materials or something like that. I know they usually do a pretty good job capping that. I would say they would they yeah. would know when they get in there yeah. what they have to yeah. do. Yeah, Ty Tigenbaum will make sure that this is safe. You've heard of Tigenbaum. They're very good at what yeah. they do. Yeah. So okay. um, that, that's what they do. Yeah. They do brownfields and closures just and don't, of that nature. We just don't level it and, and pave over it. They have to, yeah. they have to prepare it. Yeah. yeah. So well, it's they're, they're also going to have to remove a lot of material. Right. Yeah. So, okay. um, and until they start digging, they won't know exactly what they have to remove, but it will be relatively, um, you know, the, this plan will remain as is. They might have to bring in more fill in order to do it, but um, it, sh it will be a safe site provided it's not dug into, which was the other reason that we, uh, Mr. Weeks actually wanted to have a structure there. And that started getting complicated, having footings and posts and whatnot into the ground. So because it's a small that, yeah. site, it? yeah. So we, that's yeah. why we decided just outdoor storage. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Any, any other questions? Any other questions? Is there any? Is there anyone here in the public like to speak for or against this application? Is there anyone in the public who'd like to speak for or against this application? Anyone in the public like to speak for or against this application? Seen so, you know, staff like to add any more comments to this? The only thing I would say is that just, and I, I put this in the memo, I just wanted to put a fine point on it, is that y you have nothing to do with the remediation. You're not approving the remediation plan. That's not your scope. You're approving, just assume that this is a plan for storage, pro forma, that kind of thing. Um, other people and parties will be responsible for all the remediation. Yep part of it so yep. that's all and the for town the still owns it yes yep. it's just for the outdoor right. storage and this way we could get it on, get it back onto the tax yep. rolls yep. keep this project moving yep absolutely any more questions from staff seeing none i entertain a motion to close this public hearing motion so made by commissioner de grace okay. seconded by commissioner higley to close this public hearing all those in favor signify by saying aye, aye. let us record aye. show Thank you, Mr. Walensky. Let the record show it was unanimous, 7-0 to close the public hearing. 
Make a motion to approve. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve public hearing number 3041 application for site plan approval for outdoor storage at 98 Prospect Street, David Weeks, DBA, Kelly Fredette Lumber, applicant, Town of Enfield, owner, map 21, lot 20, I1 zone, per the reference plans and other, uh, <clears throat> and other application support documentations, and the 28 conditions listed. Thank you. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner DeGray. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, Mr. Secretary, whenever you're ready for a roll call vote. Yeah. Uh, Lou Fiore? Four. Linda DeGray? Four. Virginia Higley? Four. Francis Alimo? Four. Ken Helinski? Four. Uh, Christian D'Antonio? Four. And John Petronella is four. Let the record show is unanimous, seven nothing, Mr. Weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with Thank the project. You. Give me a second here to get collected here. Yeah, that was a good question to ask, whether it's going to be. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Secretary, I'll have to put your map away. Yeah. What do we got now? No. Okay. We're now, yes, my, that's right. Now we're on to uh, new business. Site plan review 1891 9 Moody Road, Unit 3A, application for a fabrication facility and window wraps for vehicles. Sean Mayo, applicant, Anderson Properties, LLC, owner, map 75, lot 36, I1 zone. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good. Would you please identify yourself for the record. I'm Sean Mayo, resident of Enfield, 14 Post Road. Thank you. Could you. Hold on. Someone having tea? Can I? Ken, are you boiling water? No, I wonder oh. if it's in here. Almost sounds like somebody's vehicle. It's yeah. like, oh. Steve's doing this. Oh. It's a bug. Hold on. I got to reconnect the meeting. We're just going to take a quick uh, reset. No, 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 it'll take less than a second. Okay. Just going to reconnect it. <laughs> Good thing you're here. You always come to the rescue. Good thing he's here. There we go. No, it wasn't you, Ken. <laughs> we got to get him some roller oh, skates. My luck, throw everybody <laughs> off their game, right? <laughs> Mr. Mayo, please start start again. We had a little, little, almost sound like a bug, didn't it? <laughs> um, I'm just, Sean Mayo, yep. uh, resident of Enfield. I live at 14 Post Road. You can just describe uh, your application, um, why you're here tonight? I'm filing for application on a site plan for fabrication on my window tint and vinyl wrap shop um, with accessory use for retail sales. Okay. Is there any any questions for this application? I just have one. Go ahead. I, I just have one. Um, are you the only employee? Is it yeah. owner operated? Yep. I was just wondering if there was going to be expansion. I, in the future, I would I would like to be able to hire people on because I as a one man shop in my industry, it's definitely pretty stressful. Uh, you could ask my girl that. Um, but at, at the time, I might have a friend of mine that helps me out on some crazy days. But other than that, I don't have any other employees. Okay, because I was over there and I just saw the one bay and that's why I was like, how many? Do yeah, you do I, I can fit two cars in there at a time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. So Thank it you. is just me. Um, when I am vinyl wrapping a car, I have the car for about two weeks. Uh, so I have the... The bay goes at an angle, so I'm able to put one car in there to stay and then continue with daily jobs, pulling them in and out. Oh, you just, I didn't realize it took two weeks. I thought it was like a one day dip. Oh, to, ra <laughs> to wrap a car is a lot of work. All right, Definitely. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> if I may have the privilege of the chair to go next, if I may, sure. if you guys don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to go through a couple things with you so that sure. we're, we're clear. Absolutely. Uh, um, uh, the retail sale of products not directly related to the permissible industrial use, uh, these products cannot be offered for sale or sold from this location. So there will be some things you won't be able to s sell there. Yeah, that I wasn't sure regarding, like I do also, I install remote starters and at the same time, yeah. you're fabricating so we'll, wiring harnesses and- we'll go, we'll go through some of them. Okay. I just wanna make sure you're you're clear and on board here. If we approve this, these are some of the conditions that are in there. Yeah, okay. Um, 
The site plan approval shall expressly exclude the display and retail sale of any products not fabricated on the site. So you will not be allowed to sell products that are not fabricated on the site. That being like uh, starters, if you're trailer not, hitch. Yeah, or? you're not making them on the site. You oh, can't. Okay. You can't sell them. Now, the retail display of the sale of any products fabricated shall be limited to percent. Well, I'm not going to go through the whole section. Um, all uses shall occur within the interior of the unit. You won't be able to do any work outside. That's fine. Um, Dust yeah. control. Yeah. You yeah. Inside anyway. Shall be responsible to secure additional. You know, that, we know that. that's that standard stuff. Um, yeah, that's pretty much pretty much why I want to go through. I just want to make sure you, you clearly understand that. Okay. All right. Is there any questions to, for the applicant? Does staff have any, anything you want to add? No, this came to our attention by Rick. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so this is kind of a call it a cleanup. Yeah. Type of situation. So uh, we apologize about the retail limitations, but that's how the reg is written currently. Maybe in the future, can't promise anything. There may be some amendments that might kind of expand that in some way. Yeah, I was, I was to trying to find any. I, I'm new to the whole this part of it. You know, I mean, I I kick butt on the entrepreneur classes, but you know, we didn't cover stuff right. like this. You know, you know, I'm I'm just glad Mr. Rochelle was actually quite helpful. You know. Good. Just yeah. a question. Yeah. So yeah. when you vinyl wrap a car, you're wrapping it so it can be shipped to protect no, the car itself? No, it's like itself? color change or paint protection film. Uh, so if you got a, a black car that you want matte black, we would vinyl wrap the whole car to change the color of it. And then the customer go, has, has to take it to DMV and have the, the registration change. But that's all. That's them. Oh. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Printed graphics, um, commercial trucks, so like landscape companies. Uh, I have a vinyl cutter, so we cut the graphics, their logos for it, you know, and do it on their trailers and stuff like that. Interesting. Yep. Thank you. Commissioner Hickley? I think this is yeah. really interesting. How long does it last when you vinyl wrap a car? As long as you like it to. Um, I usually recommend people to have it ceramic coated after, so then it lasts a lot longer. Um, usually they say it's easily removed three to five years, but as long as you maintain it and garage the vehicle, it could last you almost the life of a vehicle oh yeah thank you you're welcome yeah. well, i think this is a, a, a good use of, of the area in the building really? and entrepreneurship we're you know sponsoring that in a way and, and I, you know and i really appreciate the help you know i think it's a good idea i'm glad to hear the staff was helpful, helpful to you to, to keep this going so yeah it got me pretty nervous yeah you know i totally never understand. you know i was 10 years at on point connections before i started my own business yeah. so it was it was really scary when you know i get the letter in the mail and i'm like oh my god i'm gonna lose everything i just worked so hard for yeah you know <laughs> yep. no all right staff's all set mm -hmm. secretary make it so there's no questions no. looking around here no. secretary make a motion to approve uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, SPR number 1891 Moody Road, Unit 3A site plan application to allow fabrication and installation of vinyl film for automotive uses and signage, and including directly related subordinate accessory retail sales of, of materials permitted to be produced, fabricated on site. Sean Mayo, DBA, Unique Wraps and Glass LLC applicant, Anderson Properties, LLC owner, MAP 75, Lot 36, I-1 zone, with the 22 conditions listed. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by, okay. Commis seconded by Commissioner Limo this time. <laughs> you beat him to a bunch. <laughs> Uh, any He's on a delay. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, uh, Secretary, roll call vote whenever you're ready. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Um, Lou Fiore? Four. Virginia Higley? Four. Linda DeGray? Four. Francis Alimo? Four. Uh, Kenneth Holinsky? Four. Christian D'Antonio? Four. And John Petronella is four. What the record show was uh, unanimous, 7 nothing approval of this uh Site plan review, you're, you're all set with the conditions. And if you have any questions about those, I'm sure staff will be more than glad to help you with awesome. that. Thank you very much. Good luck with your business. You have a great night. You too. <laughs> okay, site, we're going to the next. Everyone's ready. Site plan review 1892 53 Manning Road, application requesting approval for an indoor long term parking facility. Walter Labonte, applicant, KBRC Realty, LLC, owner, map 32, lot 15, I-1 zone. 
Good evening. Welcome. Hello. Identify yourself for the record, please. I'm uh, Walter Labonte. I'm also Chip Labonte. Um, I've been here a few times. And I'm sure you guys are all familiar with the uh, former Hallmark building. Yeah, you know, and your address, please? I'm sorry, the property is at 53 Manning Road. Your personal address, please? Um, I live in Sherburne, Massachusetts. Hey, thank you. I'm formerly from Springfield. Thank you. Um, so I bought the Hallmark building in 2010 and operated it uh, as warehouse space for about 10 years. We were here in 2017 um, and got approval for a uh, port to be a uh, change of use for a portion of the building is self-storage. And that was completed, or I shouldn't say completed, um, approved. And we have um, partially completed the installation of self-storage units and we're um, working um, further on that. Uh, unfortunately, we also uh, had Brooks Brothers as a tenant, so I'm sure you're familiar with that. Um, they left the building um, um, last uh, a year ago, November, with all the stuff inside it. You may have seen the article in the New York Times. Uh, so that left us in sort of a distressful situation. We were able to sell the building. Um, and the sale, I think, was just finalized today, but it started over around um, May 6th. I've supplied um, uh, Ms. Witten with the deed of the property, which is currently owned now by a company in Las Vegas. They're called um, All Purpose Storage Enfield. Um, and so I am a tenant in, um, for the second floor of the building. Um, so if you all are familiar with the building, um, I provided a photograph so that you could sort of get a sense that the second floor is certainly a second floor, but it is drive up on land. It's sort of like a barn, a I mean, a, a old a Yankee barn and that you could drive up on one level. Um, Shelton Brothers was formerly a uh, beer importer. They were a tenant of ours. They also went out of business during COVID. Um, and so part of the sale of the building has left me as a tenant on the second floor. So we have um, uh, been trying to lease that portion of the building for a couple of years. Um, and it's been uh, sort of difficult because the building is somewhat obsolete with only the two overhead doors. That's only one part of the problem. The other part of the problem is the concerns about traffic on Manning Road. So I think there that we've done a really good job of mitigating the traffic um, because the self-storage portion is really much more towards um, just consumer, I don't know if consumer is the right word, residential vehicles. Um, there aren't nearly, but there really isn't truck traffic for our building anymore. Um, and that's, you know, I can't say that's 100% because sometimes somebody will have their moving truck, they move out of a, their house, then they move it into a self-storage unit. But that's not part of what I'm here to talk to you about today. Um, and I wanted to tell you that first and foremost, that this idea of um, using long-term parking, which essentially um, for one or three months and the like, you have a nice car, it's a summer car, and you want to get it off the road, um, it's to cater to that business, which evidently is growing, and we would like to use that second floor space um, simply for long-term parking, which I described in the narrative. Uh, you know, it's not, it's, it's really somebody's gonna come in, drive down the street, um, we're going to park their car so they're not coming inside the building, and uh, it's going to be there for one month, two months, three months. Um, and then typically come out in March and the like. <clears throat> and it's as simple as that. We feel, feel like it is the lowest traffic um, use. Um, there are some issues there regarding upgrading the sprinkler system and the HVAC. Um, we're going to either use a lift or a ramp to bring cars into the building. And it's really as simple as that. Um, I think that I supplied you all with a site plan, which um, shows the easy access that they are going to drive through the large existing parking lot um, and then uh, a parking plan for inside the building. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. I'm reading. You're all, you're all set? Well, that's as much as I can think of to say. Okay. Um, we've had some uh, a number of preliminary uh, engineering work done regarding uh, 
the structural facility. I noticed that the building department had some concerns about that. I have um, letters from the original um, builders, engineers, and also something that was done um, in February confirming the building's ability to do that. I did have a fire, um, a, rather a sprinkler engineer confirm that we do need to have the sprinklers replaced in um, to conform with the fire department or the fire safety, I'm not sure what, um, but anyways, they need to be replaced and also that the HVAC system needs to be upgraded um, to deal with that. And so I think that we've addressed the situations. I've talked to the fire department a number of times in the building department. Um, and so I hope there that, that we could do this with the um, being a really uh, low impact, in fact, the lowest impact uh, use that we could possibly um, provide for the neighborhood. And also, we're looking to do a business as opposed to have a tenant because it's been so difficult to lease that portion of the building. Well, if I, if I may, again, take the privilege to start. Um, I know the building very well, having worked in that building for eight years of my life, upstairs and downstairs. I probably close my eyes and I know exactly that upstairs I can walk it in my sleep. But having said that, um, we do have some comments here from the fire marshal, for instance, uh, of that district, North Townsville Fire Department. An additional fire hydrant needs to be installed, and the area on the north side has to be graded and made so the fire apparatus can go up and through the northeast corner of the gate. Um, so there are some concerns in, on the fire marshal's part of, of, of that fire district. And you're right, the building department has pretty much held back a lot of their concerns until there's more inspections are done and things move along in order to get your certificate of occupancy. So I'm not even going to mention that because, you know, that's going to come down the road. And you've already mentioned things that you already have to do, like your HVA system and a few other things. So it sounds like from a monetary standpoint, you're going to have quite a big investment to put this parking garage in place. Um, my, my, one of my other concerns is, since I don't have any detail, detail from you, is that would these automobiles and recreational vehicles stored there, would there be storage with, with gasoline still in their gasoline tanks? No RVs. No RVs, okay. Just cars. Just cars. Yes. Okay. Um, so th it's an interesting situation, and I'm just going to defer to the fire department. And so I've heard two, I went to, uh, the Big E does this, and I asked them about that, and evidently they prefer something like a third or a quarter tank of gasoline. And then I've talked to actual operators and they want a full tank. Wow. And the reason being is it's the vapor that is the danger, not the actual liquid. So whatever the fire department says is what we're going to make customers do. Okay. I mean, it's really, they tell us what to do. We, nobody cares. Right. We're just right. going to follow the, whatever they want. Okay. Well, thank you. Hey, thanks for that information too. That's good to know. Thanks. Mr. Higley. You said no RVs, but how about trucks and boats? As I said um, in my narrative, absolutely no boats. And the reason about no boats is they're fiberglass or plastic. It's just my sprinkler system can't handle it. So it's just a no go from the, the get go. I mean, in this area, in Connecticut River and all, you know, it'd be sort of interesting and nice, but it's an absolute no go with my sprinkler system. Um, so it's not possible. RVs, they're way too big. My doors are 10 feet. Right. Right. I might replace the door to get to 12 feet, but actually, I, I really can't even see doing that. I mean, it's possible just because they're obsolete, um, but RVs, no. They're also largely plastic. Well, that would limit your uh, size of trucks also because the bigger trucks wouldn't fit through your door. It's not a truck business. It's really, okay. you've got a nice car, it's a summer car. It's a, cor you know, it's a convertible. You're not, you don't want to drive it in the salt. And largely, it's like, for people who have a garage, they don't need it. But if they're, if they have, if I've talked to an operator recently, he has a customer with eight cars. So he can't even, even if he had a two or four car garage at home, he doesn't have enough garage space. And if you're in a condo and have two cars and you know, you don't have a garage or what, it's dealing with those people. It's a sort of a side business. It's a similar situation to self storage where people have too much stuff. Um, and they want to get their nice car off the road so it doesn't, you know, get affected by salt and even just the rain and sun during the winter. Thank you. Commissioner Lamo? Yeah. Um, so did you say you don't own the building anymore? Nope. So um, the farmer's market that we approved is not happening? I wish it was. The town did their own. 
And as you recall, um, COVID was bad last fall when we tried to get it started. Okay, but it's still there. The no, permit's we never still started there? it. So it's not going to happen? Uh, um, not to my no I don't have any control over it. So you're not the owner? Right, and I'm not applying. I mean, that was... I just remember your application and yeah. we approved it and yep. um, it it's never Very happened. disappointing that we put an awful lot of effort into it. And um, they do one at the mall. Right. And I don't even think they charge for it. Um, and so we were hoping that we would be able to provide a better alternative. But COVID got really strong in the fall and people weren't interested. Right. Okay. I'm just curious. I remember the whole process. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Commissioner Grill. Just a quick question. Did, are you able or do you have the engineering? Is that second floor going to hold all them? That's no, all them cars. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, um, Mr. Fiore, uh, you're bit, it's all solid, solid thick. cement. Well, yes. that's why I looked at yeah. you also. I mean, yeah. that's a lot of. Yeah. Solid yeah. cement. That, that was the original, original well, outside of Central Street, the old Springbok building. That's the original Hallmark Cards warehouse on that second floor. And it's still in the it's, condition it was. I haven't been there. I haven't been there in 20 years. That's a more longer than that, but originally it was in a really right? good condition. So. And, you know, it's, um, solid cement. So um, in the course of selling the building, we had a, a buyer who actually fell through, who did some engineering on it. And they did an R ART with the town. And they supplied the town with a letter from... I'm not sure how you pronounce this, Machi Engineers, um, which is um, dated February this year, that confirmed, you know, the stability or the, you know, the ability um, of the building to, for this use. And then I also have something going back from like 1966 from the original architect, where he provided um, the capacity and I've talked to the building inspector and he's good with it all. Fine, that's all. Let me see the Anyone on this side first? Or? Go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead, Frank. So just another question. So a little bit on the logistics side of it. Are people going to have free reign to go in and out? And Absolutely get not. They do they not. They have to make an appointment they, and somebody will be, right? So, yeah. So my intent, um, in part because I don't live locally, I may move here because, you know, to make this happen, is to be open like two days a week. I mean, it's, it's not a come and go business. We'll be open Saturdays because that's the one day that most everybody wants to come and probably something, you know, like a Wednesday afternoon, um, come and drop off your car, come and pick up your car. Um, you know, we're gonna valet it. be monitored and, and facilitated by you, by somebody in charge. Well, mostly uh, um, electronically. Um, we're, we're not, I mean, obviously nobody's coming in to do work on a car. You know, and people are encouraged, take your stuff, you know, take your tennis racket, take your keys, make sure you've got everything, because if we have to come back and do something for you, we're going to charge you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a basic thing. I'm I mean, just looking at it from a safety perspective where you yeah, know, no, it's not going to well, be the, wide open for people to go in there and move cars. And oh, God, are, no. Okay. oh, God, no, absolutely not. And what's more is there's a risk. Um, you know, if your car is there, you don't want him walking around. You know, with a key, right, all of doing, that. and yeah, no right. monkey business at all. They don't, um, you, you know, the public is not going to have free reign to go in there okay. um, to do anything. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for making that clear. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. So uh, you're not proposing uh, there's no like a full time 24 7 security uh, guard? Electronically. Uh, It'll all be electronically. Yeah. Okay. So there won't be anybody either there staffed or full time or a, or a, or a small apartment living there to no. monitor. It's everything. pretty gross. Okay. Yeah. I mean, not gross, but it's yeah. not it's not residential. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and it w there there seems to be th this this whole thing of uh, um, is is this considered parking or storage? Uh, to me, it's storage. It's not parking. Is, is that how we're looking at this? Yeah, it, it's it, there. Um, we we in the department have been kind of vacillating back and forth on mm. this, and you know, if if we consider it um, long term parking, um, would that open up the window for other places to just have that? Um, it certainly could be just considered storage of of cars, and that could be it. Um, that's not an issue at all. So uh, I think you came in under the parking um, regulation, but 
I, I think that if we just called it storage of vehicles, that's yeah. long-term parking storage, no problem either way. Um, but um, the parking garages actually are not even a, a use listed in the use table in the uh, business zones. It's just industrial. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, the sprinkler system probably, uh, th there's going to be some issues with that, but that will be taken care of in the uh, uh, permit uh, yeah, as, as far as storage, yeah, the, these cars are actually lighter per square foot than storage by a lot. A car weighs, say, 4,000 pounds. Yeah. The, in the same area, that building should be designed to handle about 12, 15,000 pounds. Yeah. So there, there should be no issue there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but should, Ken, there used to be racks. Be. There used to be racks. Yeah. At, you know, at why is that table going? All the way up to the ceiling, packed with cases and cases of uh, home yeah, cars items on that on that, on that floor, oh, that whole length of that whole upper section. And if it's paper, that's can well, get it real heavy. Paper, yeah, it's all paper. As well as pallets of beer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You have beer afterwards. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? The only question I have for you, if if we are to approve this, um, it is a site plan uh, approval. But yet, I would like to have the North Townsville Fire Marshal's comments in here. I know we can't really do conditions per se, uh, but he brings up some you, very. You certainly going to have conditions, and I've, I've actually su supplied this evening okay. the revised memo with conditions and a motion. Okay. And I would certainly um, include the. We just got the fire marshal and building yeah. department uh, comments this afternoon, like yeah. very late this afternoon. So I would just say. And I think the building, the building comments are pretty obvious. And basically, his comments are at the end when the, for the CO and during that process. But, but the, but the fire, fire marshals are different. So I would um, like to make a recommendation that we Both add uh, conditions 18 and 19 to be at least the first two items that. Um, uh, fire Marshal Pavancher mentions an additional fire hydrant needs to be installed in, in the area on North Street for the length of the two-story building has to be graded and made so the fire apparatus go up through the northwest corner gate. Does anyone have any objections to that? No. Okay. Any more discussion? So, Mr. So yep. Mr. Chair, the, yep. the comments that we got this afternoon that are on our desk will yep. be because they're not in the right, so they'll right. be added. Yes, that's what these, I just these that's, conditions that's will be. Right, I, I made those. Because yeah. 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 no, I'm just thinking. So do you want to include the building? Yeah, because they're a separate well. document. I mean, yeah. was there is there, well, thing, we'll is there building fire comments and building comments as okay. yeah. as oh, we yeah. received I'll, them today? Because they're okay. a separate document. Okay, I'll include that in the motion. Yeah, however yeah. you want to do that. I might I make another suggestion is that staff should review any grading plan that. Any grading that is going to be required because the the fire marshal does reference some. I couldn't hear with the fire behind me. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So so make a recommendation that we actually that staff has to review the grading plan that the fire marshal is recommending. Sure. Uh, I'm good with that. We we add them in there. Yeah. Because our it says pending on our paper on our packet. Yeah. Our packet information says. These two documents are pending, which we got. Right. Yeah. So we got, we got them. Okay. Until this afternoon. <laughs> Until this afternoon, right? <laughs> you and them, Lady Amy Olson. <laughs> that was that stack in front of you. Oh, just to be, just so we make sure we have it in the record. Absolutely. Too. Totally agree. I'm, are you all set with that, Mr. Secretary? Where we are? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. So seeing that, uh, is there a motion to approve? Uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve uh, SPR 1892-53 Manning Road site plan modification for the addition of long-term storage of vehicles on the second floor of a warehouse. Applicant Walter Labonte, owner, KRBC Realty in the I-1 zone, map 34, lot 15, with the 17 conditions listed along with um, uh, the uh, fire marshal's um, uh, conditions that uh, dated uh, 5-26-22 uh, and the building department's review comments that is dated also 5-26-22. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Alimo. Any discussion on this motion? Sorry, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> is there any discussion on this motion? 
Seeing none, roll call vote whenever you're ready, Mr. Secretary. Uh, Lou Fiore. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Francis Alimo. Four. Uh, Ken Holinsky. Four. Christian D'Antonio. Four. And John Petronola is four. The record show was unanimous, 7 nothing with the conditions. Good luck with this uh, enterprise. Great. Thank you very much. Nice to see you again. Thank chip, you. Chip, chip. All right. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night. There's no old business, so now we'll move on to other business. Any other businesses, discussion on size limits for warehouse distribution centers or large buildings, whatever you want to classify that to be. Um, is there any information that staff would like to pass out for us to start this discussion? Are you a mind reader? Yeah. <laughs> I've been called that kind of time. <laughs> and other things. Is it a story? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, Lou had sent an article regarding the Windsor regulations that was in Monday's JI. So, Thank you. Um, they decided to kind of do what we're doing. And, um, but, and they also were considering a moratorium, but they decided to go with regulations instead. So, the thing is, is that they. And I, I, I guess, what's to me if I can't, Lori, well, if I can't, Kenny probably doesn't have this. Oh, you're right, yes. But Kenny, you, you have the other thing, that, at least you have the article that I sent you from the yes, JI? Okay, so I think that's a good point, you know. So I think, you, I think you'll be all right by just having that for tonight yeah. anyways. So, so, so I, I'll just kind of describe it at this point. Um, they basically will allow a warehouse distribution center um, provided that they have certain criteria um, by right, in other words, site plan, but otherwise if they exceed those criteria by special use, um, the, the criteria includes the facility, um, the facility is greater than 200,000 square feet in floor area, and the ratio of loading docks to floor area does not exceed one loading dock per 15,000 square feet of floor area. And the ratio of trailer storage spaces to floor area does not exceed one trailer storage space per 7,500 square feet of floor area. And then they have a separating distance um, of 1,000 feet from the nearest residential zone. Now, the, the, those ratios, Matt and I were discussing it, and, and we're not sure where that came from. What, what was the criteria? How did they come up with those numbers? You know, why 7,500 instead of 8,000 or whatever? So I do have a call in to the town planner in, in Windsor. Um, both of us know him, and um, I'm sure that we'll, we'll get some information as to where they came up with this criteria. But um, essentially, they're doing the same thing that we're, we're looking to do. So, um, I, I, you know, we're, I'm looking at this as I think we should do the text change. That's just my opinion, and I understand that there's many out there in the town that would rather do a moratorium, but I feel that that would restrict development in town, and I think that this is a cleaner and safer way to do things. And I think we decided at the last minute, just to, I don't think you were here, Chris, we decided last minute, actually, we did uh, an informal vote. I don't think I did a roll call vote, but it was four to three not to do the moratorium. Um, so I think we'll stick with that. I mean, in good faith, yeah. I think that's the way we should stick. Uh, if we had a vote tonight, it might be different, but I don't think we should do that. I think that's unfair. Mm -hmm. we, um, we decided not to do the moratorium and try to at least investigate uh, a tax change instead. And I, and I think that's a good faith how we still should proceed. Um, there's a couple things I just wanted to read from the article, which really, if you don't mind, uh, which merely made me um, really stop and think about some things. And, and I want to be able to share that with you guys, if you don't mind. Um, with, again, just as a rehash here, with a special use, um, this is again, this is from Mr. Bars, is that how you pronounce his name? I'm quoting him from the article. Um, with a special use, you can weigh in on such factors as is it compatible with the neighborhood. Does it generate too much traffic? Is there sufficient utility capacity? Um, things of that nature come into play. The change also means that large warehouse proposals um, 
you know, or, or large proposals. We don't can get away from nowhere where else if we want to. We'll be subject to public hearings automatically instead of like what we did the last time for one of our applicants where we had to decide and kind of vote whether we want to do that. It would, special use automatically means there's a public hearing. And the commission can use resident feedback mm -hmm. to then uh, require changes to plans to address concerns of residents and board members instead of on a site plan review, as you, you and we all know we're kind of limited. Kind of need to have some agreement from the applicant per se. Um, then it goes on to they go on to explain um, um, that the, these changes don't allow the commission complete discretion, but it does allow uh, the ability to deny a proposal deemed too intensive. As an example, it gives us the ability to do that if so desired. Um, it additionally allows the commission to mandate conditions meant to reduce impacts to surrounding residents. It allows us to do that, where in some cases site plan reviews don't allow us to do that because they meet the minimum criteria. And again, minimum criteria, site plan reviews. Um, bars and the commission members agreed they did not want to take the route of South Windsor, because South Windsor did do a moratorium, and, and we don't want to do that either. We're not doing that uh, on new warehouse development while the regulations were being drafted. So I, again, I just wanted to share that with you so at least you know where your chairman is coming from. I, I think there's other commissioners who might be thinking the same way, so I'll, I'll, I'll give up the the mic now and let other people kind of sp to speak if they so desire tonight. Commissioner Holinsky, you look like you're ready to say something. Yeah, I've been thinking, thinking about, about this a lot since our last, uh, the last meeting. And uh, I think if you're talking about, my biggest concern is the large warehouses and large industrial. And I think, you know, with the issues we've had in town with, with warehouses going up, Seems to me you want warehouses to be in kind of areas that don't impact neighborhoods as much. You know, for example, up by the prison, you know, uh, some fields that are in outlying areas, that kind of thing. So you want to you want to minimize the impact of these facilities to the neighborhood. I think that's probably my biggest concern. The second one is, is the traffic issue. You want to make sure you have proper traffic access to these facilities for the trucks to go through. Frankly, I think, you know, the ones you know, we've approved in the past, I think we're going to end up with some large traffic problems in town and trucks going into these, uh, these warehouses. Um, you know, they need to be fairly accessible to main roads or the roads to them need to be improved such that you can uh, allow access to these warehouses. And that's kind of where I'm coming from. So I, I kind of like the special uh, special use permit um, idea because that, that kind of gives us some flexibility there. But I think maybe we need to go beyond that somehow and, and perhaps Limit the size of these types of facilities to some reasonable level. I guess that's that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, with with respect to the traffic um, on on these types of uses, what it's on what. What triggers, uh, uh, what's the amount of traffic that would trigger an STC review? Is, is it uh, number uh, of, of uh, trips generated or is it size of building and type of building? I, I believe it's the, I think it's anything over 200 parking spaces, new 200 okay. new spaces. So it goes by parking spaces, whether it's uh, employee parking and, and yeah. or truck and tractor trailer and so forth. Because uh, you know that gives me something to to consider about. I, I don't want to sit here and, and be the traffic cop. I want if the if the applicant has as is compelled to do an STC uh, uh, traffic review study and so forth, then it kind of gets us off the hook, or and it puts it all into the state's hands, um, which you know they do they do a good job. Uh, the uh, um, the other thing is is. Uh, Looking at the regulations from Windsor, great information. Uh, I, I was curious as to how this would tie into, let's say, the two previous 
distribution centers, warehouse, and, and how how that equates to these numbers, just just as an idea, give it some uh, uh, perspective as to uh, how would how would those buildings be perceived? That I I want to I want to make sure that we're not putting a, a, a too less or too much of a burden on on anything, and in, in where the uh, where a lot of applicants say you know we we need more loading docks per square foot or whatever it may be, but I, I just want to kind of do a, an analysis on that. If, if we could do just a quick math figure, because we, we know the sizes of those buildings and we can count the docks, right? And we can kind of do some math there. Um, and then they have, they show trailer storage and, and whatnot else, just as, a, as something to look at. I just don't want to do a, a knee jerk reaction and say, um, hey, uh, this looks good. Let's, uh, let's accept this. I, I'd like to it be our own and, and really look at it and, and so forth. Uh, I, uh, I'm just against, you know, just taking something and say, yeah, okay, let's do that. Like a moratorium, for yeah. instance. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great idea. Yeah. And I, I think we were thinking yeah. of yeah. doing that anyway. So yeah. um, that would be part of the analysis. Yeah. Our loading docks. just trying to figure out where yeah. he came up, where they came up with those original numbers. So yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 I think but this, this is great information to, to, as a starting point. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. So okay. thank you. Are loading docks included in parking spaces, or they, would you happen to know in that, that for d d no. generated traffic? They're not. No. So it's just pure parking spaces, not including loading docks. Correct. That's good because to know. Okay. theoretically, they're not parking at the loading dock. They shouldn't be. Yeah. Uh, but that, like I said, theoretically. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, Mr. Lima. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I think I does dovetail off what Ken was saying a little bit, and I think I talked about this last time relative to our zoning in town yeah um and i think staff was going to get us um some examples or the amount of parcels yep. that were affected that are near residential well here's the problem with that if i can if you, if, no. if you don't mind no, Here, no. I, here's the problem well, not the problem but here's the dilemma with that so yes yeah, staff can go ahead and attempt to do that through gis and get us the amount of parcels that might fit a large building but that doesn't necessarily mean that's that's going to give you what you're looking for because i'll just go play devil's advocate mm -hmm. just to make this example um so they, they 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 spend a lot of time and they give us that inventory of parcels that might fit one of those current developments that's happening right now mm -hmm. but in the meantime they're not giving us all the information because that's not what we asked for the other information is there might be three smaller lots all next to each other that don't meet that criteria but then Luffy Hori, you know, I, I win a lottery, $20 million, and I decide I'm going to go and I'm going to buy those three lots and come in here and combine them into one larger one. Mm -hmm. That wasn't in our inventory. Right. So that's why, in some aspects, the inventory you're asking for really doesn't play a part in what we're discussing here, because that could happen at any time. But that would be a separate application of merging the lots. It would be, but I mean, it, we can deny that. It does, but again, it doesn't really help. What? What, yeah, no. I, I don't know how you could deny yeah, what, merging deny lots. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, don't, I they, mean, don't they have to? That's, uh, that's a right. That's there a right. A right to merge lots. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and commercial and, and residential. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. I thought you could. Yes. I thought you had to. So that's why I'm saying that for asking staff to go through and spend a lot of time trying to do that inventory <laughs> might not give us the benefit what you're looking for. It might not okay. might not be so, prevalent to what we even need to know. To be honest I, with you. I, I, and, just, and, but I, just throwing so it the out other yeah. the, other, and, the other thing I was going to say um, about that is so. A 200,000 square foot, right? Say it's 200,000 square feet. Yeah. Do we need to have, say, okay, if you're going to do a 200,000 square feet, you have to have at least X amount of acreage so you don't impact the whole lot. No, you're going to have a 1,000. Say we do a 1,000 foot buffer, you have a 1,000 foot yeah. buffer. But, Percentages. I mean, you put a 200,000 square foot lot on, you know, just on a, a 200,000 square foot building on what size lot? Yeah, that. yeah, we need to, yeah. So that's right. why so, yeah. I'm thinking some I, this information is good. Yeah, I keep yeah. thinking about the, the zoning and you know our, our zoning regulation changes coming up and yeah. our PLCD. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we should probably just take away that zoning that's near any kind of residential. Just don't even allow that. Change that zoning. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I, well, we that, have to look at the big asking, picture here. I mean, yeah. we, we have an empty industrial park. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the industrial parts are different. It's Frank, empty because it's wetlands. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. is it really park, wetlands though? They the, used to be. The industrial parks are different issue that we can discuss in nauseum. Right, I, I know. So a two hundred thousand square foot building in the industrial park is small. Yeah, you know. So I don't know. It's just 
I, I think this is a good starting yeah, template to start from, but yeah. I think we have to plug more things uh, in to it. Well, I like your idea about changing the zoning, but I don't know if we can go ahead and do that. But. Well, we have to look at the whole community. Yeah. I mean, does you know a building like on North Maple Street belong next to out there? I mean, it was farmland, and next thing you know, it's it's a big. It was industrial. It was industrial, right? But it was that was industrial. A long time, but it, it was changed to industrial. No, yeah. it was industrial. It was just being used as farmland. Right. And Misty Meadow was part of that industrial mm -hmm. that got rezoned to residential. To residential. So no, that it was... whole area was industrial and then it was just being used as farmland and people just assumed it was farmland because nobody well, I thought ever... the zoning got changed there like in the last 20 years. No, 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 no. no, no. Maybe no. 40 years. 40. I think the confusing there's a lot thing of, is... There's a lot of components. I mean, yeah. we're going to do, like, the POCD has yeah. to be the planning of development. Yeah. That's, I think, we have to get our arms around and our new zoning regulations to stop this from happening again. I think the confusing part is there's no zone for agriculture. Right. It can be anywhere in town, but there's no right. agriculture zone per se. And that's so, another thing, because we want to protect our farmlands, yep. and we want to keep our farming. Other towns so we need, have so it's a big agricultural picture. zones, right. but we don't. Yeah. Ours is in the R33, R88 areas. It can yeah. be anywhere but right, the industrial I'm right now. Park. Right, right. Anywhere. We have a big opportunity coming up here, though, with, you know, in the next six or eight months. And again, I, I'm looking at the big picture. I'm for you know, doing something like this. Yep. And it's a great starting point, but um, we're, it's going to be our charge. Look, at this is going to be the board that's going to do the POCD, and we're going to do... We'll be doing the, the POCD zone. in September. Right. That's our goal, to have that in front of you for September. The zoning regulations, I think the goal is well. Can I throw January of 2023 out? <laughs> Lori well, and Matt? Yeah. It's going to so, be this board. Yeah. This, this is going to yeah, be the makeup of this those, board those that's going to do those two big, huge absolutely projects that are going to go forward for well, a long time. POCD is more than just us. We have to well, approve yeah, it, and, and then the council, council has to no, approve No, I understand. Yeah. But, I mean, this is, a, this is a great opportunity, I like to say, yeah. that we have yeah. to get all these issues, you know, get everybody's input, yep. get these things straightened out. Yep. You know, I don't want a piecemeal thing. It seems like we're knee-jerking here. Well, we, but, I think, I think, but it's a I good think, start to stop a big I think so. I think it's, from coming. And I think is, uh, I'm, if, I'm good with that, but I'm looking at the big picture. If I may, if I don't mind uh, stepping on Commissioner Holinsky, because I think he said it very nicely the last meeting. Um, we, we, need to, we need to start addressing this we some do. way or another and not, not wait for POCD or our regulation changes in January. Right, but I just want to keep that in mind, that we do have a great opportunity yep. coming yep. soon that we yep. can address every issue. Yep. Well, we we'll attempt to anyways. Well, we're going to try our best. Yeah. Well, well, you don't want somebody to come back and say, oh, remember 20 years ago when that Lou Fury was the chairman, right? No, we're going to do it right, Lou. We all, Under still, you, we're gonna... we all <laughs> still carry the sins of our fathers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, I know that better than most of you guys. <laughs> and with, with, uh, uh, with, with, with yes, yes. Can we look? Yeah, yeah like, go ahead, Ken. Like go ahead. Go, please. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I, I... Just, you know, no, just hearing just all the conversation here, I, I think maybe maybe it's something that could be done in stages. You know, uh, I, I, I tend, tend to, to lean, lean towards doing some zoning changes because I think that's the only way to, to really nip this overall problem in the bud. I mean, yeah, obviously, people who live in, lived in Misty Meadow, they were living next to a tobacco field. Yeah, <laughs> it's a 20 years. Yeah. 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 So, 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 Big building pops up next to them, <laughs> and so uh, I'm sure most of the people weren't even aware of that. Or if they were, they weren't worried about it because it never changed, you know. And then all of a sudden, you know, in a couple of years, it all changed. So, so I think you need to designate areas for these large buildings that are in more remote areas. And if that's a zoning change, so be it. Maybe an initial way to start to uh, move towards that is to, you know, get into this special use type thing that we see in Windsor and and so forth. You know, you know, and I'm kind of surprised at South Windsor too because I worked in South Windsor for five years and and you know their warehouses are basically in industrial areas. There are not a lot of houses near the warehouses I saw. And the ones along Route Five. Yeah, yeah, right, right in that area. I mean. That's perfect. I mean, there, you know, right. there, 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 there weren't, weren't any houses, houses, you know. You know?
until you get bottled out of that area. But uh, they didn't, uh, weren't affected by the warehouse. So, so I think that's the kind of maybe a combination of things is what we're looking for mm -hmm. as we move forward. Thank you, Ken. Great. Yeah, uh, with respect to, you know, the, the parcels that are out there that might be available to this, I mean, it's pretty simple. You look at a zoning map, they're all color-coded, industrial one, industrial two zone, yep. whatever's, and then whatever's not developed, that's basically right. w w what you're looking at. I think Kieran asked for something specific yeah. that yeah. was and next to residential. Yeah. Oh. I yeah, think that's right. Because Kieran wasn't here tonight, that's why I wanted. But to bring parcels it back up can tonight. be merged, right. and, 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 and and that's pretty simply done. Uh, but uh, by right, they can uh, be merged by right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. by right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can take three lots and, and draw one big building that covers uh, that uses all three of them. Submit it to us, and and if it gets approved, it basically Makes comes sense. merged. Yeah, and that's that's about it. And, and it could be next to a residential area. Well, it would have to meet the buffer requirements right. and so forth. Right. Yeah, the house could uh, be an industrial zone. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right. L Lori, it's a, there's a lot to it. Yep. Yeah, L Lori, we have a, a full scale zoning maps, color coded. We have those small ones in our um, in our binders that you give us, which are you know hard to read, hard mm -hmm. to see. They are. Um, and and if I can get a full size, a full scale one, and I, I think everybody should have one, but this way here, you can open up the whole town and see a 24 by 36 inch map or whatever and get a, a much better perspective of it. You can actually read the streets uh, and so forth. That small one that's that's in a, in a packet is even a, it's so blurred too because it's so reduced. You can't even read the streets even yeah, with a magnifying yeah, glass. Yeah. But if we have something, yeah. you know, you. that that's full size, that'd be great. Even if you have it just electronically, you can you can email it and, and, and we'll have it that way. Oh and no, I don't so paper. If yeah. if you, I mean, it's in the GIS. Yeah. If you go to the GIS yeah. and you collect and you select the zoning layer, it shows you the entire town and all the zones. On, on the GIS, yeah. Yeah. there's a zoning layer on that. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, know the, the 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 way that map was created. I mean, the way it it comes out at like four by three. It's yeah. it's massive. Yeah, um, we could try to print them smaller. Um, you know, it's a lot of color ink and stuff. So, um, and hopefully we're going to be changing it. But um, I I'll see what we can do. Yeah, to yeah. get yeah. you a larger, yeah. a, a larger Go. hard copy on, on the GIS and on the computer. That's fine. But you, 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 you're if if you're going to look at the a big area in perspective, you're still got to got the size of the. Yeah. Computer screen, screen where you don't, where you don't, you know, the whole three by four sheet yeah. gives you the whole perspective of, you know, the town, uh, per se. Okay. I mean, if, if well, I, I got the ability to, to print a yeah. uh, large format, so. They do. You guys do. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, we, no, we, we, it's just, a, uh, it's, it's a color, it's a color plotter. Yeah. Um, so we have to make sure we'd have enough ink for all of those. Yeah. Go to the register of voters office. They got a lot of ink. I don't have a color printer. <laughs> Honest to gosh, I, really I don't, don't have a color printer in the office. I don't have put a it color in your either. <laughs> I, I, we talked put about it. it. Put it in your but budget. poor Matt, he's been getting, when I, when I go and see him, he gets an education on his own Matt. We talk about it. <laughs> um, hey, I, I agree. I think, I think uh, oh, sorry. I agree. I think we need large copies of that somehow. Either something we can put on a computer screen that we can expand, or, or frankly, I'd like to see a large copy as well, like, like John said. Because, uh, you know, I was pouring over with my magnifying glass last night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ken. Chris? Yep. Uh, yeah, on that note, just even, even the digital PDF version of this is is really grainy. So, um, but I'll, I'll definitely check out the, the GIS uh, layer. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it's, it's tough even even on the computer to read this yeah. because yeah. yeah, you still can't see street names. And yeah. it, it's, it's nice and easy to just pull up a PDF. Let's but. do it the way they did it before they had computers. Let's go Actually, back to that. I'll take a poll. I do I'll take have one <laughs> that I had gotten when I first got on the commission, but it's probably obsolete. Mm, yeah. But it was a full size map and it really does help because you can see the streets. Yeah. It's, yeah. So yeah. It, it is a benefit. So there seems to be an agreement for Lisa to ask staff to go ahead and talk to the planner in, in Windsor to get some definition on these 
their algorithm where they come up with the hum, you know, loading dock for 15,000 mm. C, C information for us and to at least uh, proceed. Is there any other questions for staff tonight on this or anything else someone wants to bring up about this at all? Chris? Yeah, I, j I just wanted to comment on this. I, I, I think it's a good balance. I can't speak to the exact numbers, and, and, and I second uh, um, Commissioner Petronella in seeing like real examples for it, especially the recent examples, to see how those would go up against these numbers mm. or comparable numbers. That's a great idea. Um, but I, I like the idea of, of striking that balance between, you know, not being so restrictive for things within uh, means. So not every warehouse is a special permit right. if it fits within, right. you know, that that what we deem, you know, reasonable. So I think that's a really important uh, point that's being made by Windsor. And, and I, I like that. Uh, that that concept and it's a good uh, I think notion to for us to dig a little deeper into thank you I think I think Chris we use a keyword here reasonable you know we want to find something that's reasonable everything good happens in a reasonable area reasonable area <laughs> anything else on that that we can you know staff's got a pretty good idea what we're looking for for next meeting if possible if you can, okay thank you thank you good conversation tonight everyone very good we'll move on any correspondence any commissioner's correspondence? Well, I have I have one thing I, I'd like to talk about, because I'm going to um, be hypocritical about myself. After reviewing and talking with multiple people, uh, attorneys and staff, um, I think it's best that we leave our P and Z rules alone and not adopt what I brought up last meeting about trying to change the agenda. Um, for a couple of reasons. First of all, the head parliamentarian for the town of Enfield, I, I talked with her about it because I know from a Robert Rules of Order how the spot we were making a motion to adjust the agenda. I thought it even, made sense. Yeah, even though it's not clean to do it when we do the minutes, it's certainly uh, okay and, 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 and fine from a Robert Rules of Order to do it there. So we don't really need to change the agenda, even though it would be cleaner if we did. Um, and then I actually got some input about uh, moving the um, uh, commissioner's correspondence remember I said move that to like number five and then a good point was brought to me is that um, and rehashed in, in to me so I went home and think is that you know, we're like a jury and all of us have to really be careful about what we say in the public even when we're not sitting here yeah. um, and a lot of what through the years and I was critical at times too with the people who sat here was always saying you know boy they're not conversing with the people they're not getting the information from the planning zone either they're not like the town council and the board of ed or they're not conversing with us they're tight-lipped they keep things to themselves yeah yeah we do and there's a reason sometimes why we do and now I'm, I'm myself included being an old politician that I am if we put you know commissioners correspondence up higher so that we're responding to questions like that and like the council and the board of ed do well, we might inadvertently accidentally be stepping in it so maybe it's just best that we just leave the agenda the way it is. And more I thought about it and talked to some people, and I think we'll just move on the way we are, if that's okay with you. Yeah. I just wanted to give you guys all an update on that. Okay. But I thought your changes made sense. It, it, it does. <laughs> it did, but now that you found out, obviously, um, we're going to leave it. I think we should, yeah. yeah. But thank you. Thank yeah. you for that. It yeah. does kind of make sense. Yeah, but, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. But I think we probably should just leave it the way yeah. it is. Good. Yeah, thank good. you. Uh, Director of Planning Report. So um, I think, Linda, you had asked about the traffic impact study. So ironically, we're like at the point where they're going to be coming to planning and zoning at the, either at the next meeting or the following meeting. Yeah. So, so um, I'm not going to give you a whole bunch of information because um, we're still working out a couple kinks. And then they're, they're probably going to come here and kind of give you a, a high level explanation as to where we stand and what we've done. And then at the at a next meeting, we'll have like more of a public meeting and have invite the public to kind of come and comment with the Planning and Zoning Commission as to the direction we go in. So Very probably good. within the next month, you'll be seeing probably more than you want to <laughs> on it. All interesting. <laughs> no, because we have some major issues that have been brought before us about traffic, and I think that is right. a big 
piece of it. So they, you know, we did the visual preference st study, and they've done market research, and you know, all sorts of other traffic studies and things of that nature. And they're just kind of taking all of that information now and trying to come up with um, a, a proposed market analysis of what what would be the highest and best use and the, probably the highest um, requirement for parking and base that on, and they'll use that as their basis for performing a traffic impact study, assuming the worst case scenario almost, as far as density. Great, so. thank you. Is that is that the study that was done around the, the old mall? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's, only, that's gonna be Region contained Council just Government. around that area. Yeah. Yeah. That's not encompassing from the Suffield Bridge to the Summers Line. No, it was, it was uh, we tried to get it to be um, more encompassing, but um, money talks, and yeah. that's that okay. it got narrowed down well, to pretty much just around the mall area. That's still something. Yeah. And seeing it's around the mall area, why don't they have the mall people come too so we can get the an update from them? mall people are weighing in on this as well. Good. Oh, good. Because the people so, in the community really want to know what's going on with that mall. Yes. I mean, I we heard it during these warehouse projects. Right. Yep. I mean, nothing's going on. Nothing's going to go on? Day one, that, that is just. Money. Nothing's going to happen. Put your mic on. Okay, yeah, please don't speak without speaking to everybody. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> go ahead. Be careful of him, careful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As we know, the mall's probably going to stay like that for a little bit until there's a new buyer, mm -hmm. is what I'm thinking. Well, you know, and I, I've asked about them because I know we. We, we went through a lot of work to do when it came before us to divide up the, the mall into separate parcels. You know, we did a lot of work and there was a lot of pushback too. There was people, you know, the public spoke. There was people against it um, for various reasons. So I just think an update for the community as well as us would be, you know, if they have anything, I know if it's negotiating, you know, leases, they're not gonna talk about that, but just something. Because that, that way the community will know. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Anything else, Lori? No, I think that's it yep. for now. The application to be received. Anything you want to report on? Oh my God, I totally forgot about that. Did we get any new applications? We got we got an application for the the site plan for the rezone that we did tonight. Yeah. And oh my God, this is. Hold. Are we going to have? Any, do we have anything to do with the uh, Kelly Fredette changes that are going down in the old Enfield Lumber? Or, or is that if that eventually come in front of us, or is that was that all done by was that ZBA or Inland Wentland? We'll be seeing that as well. oh. yeah, I don't yeah. think we've received yeah. that application. Have no, we? we haven't got that application. We're yet. still working with was, them. There were more, I think. Of course, that was important God, to them, Spring Street, right. but they were very intent on getting the prospect, the ninety-eight prospect. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but that's coming down the line. Springs the old, the old, old peerless local. tool uh, building. Yeah, remember Spring, the fire? Yeah. Yeah. Remember the fire in yeah, 77? Yeah. 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 I was there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, remember that? Yeah, remember that to this well, day? When he said Spring Street, he's meaning the old peerless tool building, because they own that, right? What? The, he, said some, he said Spring. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. I can't yeah. get into the network. I think that's where he means. I think they're enlarging the lumber, too. Yes. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah. Do they need a second one? So, sorry, I, I um, that's okay. once again, this won't give me my networks. And okay. It keeps <laughs> dropping them out, and that's where I go for my uploads for the Do we uh, have any opportunities or unresolved issues? Nope. No? Seeing none, I will Move entertain a motion. To adjourn. Motion made by <laughs> Vice Chairman Higley, seconded by Vice Chairman DeGray to adjourn this meeting at uh, 916. Thank you very much. The meeting's over time. Thank you, Kenny. Take care.